everyone and welcome to the start of a new vlog. I hope you've all been having a wonderful week. I've just had lunch and gone outside for a little walk after lunch to admire the snowdrops which are just springing up everywhere. It's very exciting for me and there are aconites starting to bloom. I also spotted some crocuses coming up so I'm feeling like spring is really on the way and that's putting me in a very good mood but I love to spot all of the very early spring flowers and it was not too cold out there today as well so yeah, it was really lovely to just have a little walk after lunch and admire the beautiful landscape. But I thought I'd better get started filming another vlog. <laughs> so I thought I'd come on this afternoon and have a little chat with you. I wanted to tell you about my reading because I have read quite a bit since we last had a chat on my last vlog. And I finished all of the agencies the Agency for Scandal by Laura Wood. This is her new YA book that just came out in January. I've read all of her other YA books. I always really enjoy them. And this one definitely didn't disappoint. And it's such a good read for Valentine's month. It's the sort of book that's perfect to read if you're going to have a wonderful bubble bath, maybe a little glass of Prosecco on a Friday night, some chocolate truffles, and like this book. That's just the perfect combination because this is such a light, frothy, fun, romantic read. And it just makes the kind of perfect book to enjoy when you're like soaking in a bubble bath. <laughs> that would be, be my ideal scenario, I think, for reading this. But yeah, it was so much fun. It's based in the Victorian age. It's about a young girl whose family has fallen on very hard times and she's taking control of the finances in quite an unusual way. She's been employed by a female agency, a female agency called the Aviary. And this is a group of women who help other women by uh, finding information with which they can blackmail the men that are harming these women in some way. And it's just such a fun book. Of course, there's romance in it. There was also a little jaunt to Yorkshire, which I very much enjoyed, that came up in this. And Laura Wood is always so good at describing clothes and amazing parties. There are some incredible balls and ball gowns in this book. I always enjoy her descriptions of parties so much. <laughs> I think in every book she does, there's, there's an amazing party that she writes about. So it's just fun, frothy, really delightful. So the perfect kind of Valentine's read. So that was a really nice light read. And actually it reminded me of this book, which I picked up in Bath back in December, which is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. This one has a bit of a similar sounding premise and reading this made me want to read this. So I might try and squeeze this into my reading later this month as well. It's, it sounds so fun. It says, Cecilia Bassingwaite belongs to a very prestigious circle of women, the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. Yet this is no ordinary Victorian ladies' society. These women spend their days pickpocketing and blackmailing their way around the country, all before it's time to sit down for tea. But when Cecilia meets Ned Lightbourne, her world is set to change forever because he's a paid assassin and she's his next hit. <laughs> this sounds like it would be really entertaining too and some of the premise reminds me a bit of this one so I think this would make quite a fun paired reading this month so I'm hoping to get to that later. But then you might have remembered in my last video I told you that I'd got the Persephone Valentine gift offer and I'd chosen Miss Bunkle Married, which I didn't have in the Persephone edition. I have it in a different edition, but I really wanted the Persephone one. 
And so I got this as part of the Valentine offer and then I just sort of opened it up and was like reading the first page and it's now 162 pages later. <laughs> I just guess I'm rereading this one, but just once you start a D.E. Stevenson novel, it's so hard to stop as I'm sure many of you who are D.E. Stevenson fans can relate to. And last year we read the first in the trilogy, which is Miss Bunkle's book. We read that for the Comfort Book Club last February. And I so enjoyed returning to that. And then I thought, why not return to Miss Bunkle Married, which I haven't read for years. I think this one actually came out when I was working at Persephone. And I think it was about 2010 that this was first published, either 2010 or 2011, and I was working there then. So I kind of remember it coming out and like sending this out in the post so many times because it was such a popular buy. And I haven't read it since then though. So it's really fun to be returning to this one. I love the Miss Bunkle books. There are three in the series. They're all published by Persephone. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying um, reading this one again. I've, I'm already somehow quite a long way through it. I might even be able to finish it this evening. I'll see if I can really get cracking later. But yeah, I'm loving this one. So I'm going to read that. I'm going to finish that one. And then I also want to move on to Daughter of the Moon Goddess. So that's what I've been reading. And these are sort of my reading plans as well for the next kind of week, few days. Um, lots of nice romantic Valentine inspired reads there. And they're all quite light and fun, I think, too, which is exactly what I'm in the mood for. So I'm really happy with my reading choices right now, which is good. But I also thought we could bake a cake together this afternoon. I told you about a rhubarb recipe in my last vlog that went up on Sunday, but it really is rhubarb season in Yorkshire right now. There's all the wonderful pink forced rhubarb that Yorkshire's really famous for and that's kind of all over the place at the moment. So I wanted to do another rhubarb inspired recipe. This would also make a lovely cake to bake for a Valentine's tea party or something like that. Someone commented on my last video I think that she was doing a Valentine's tea party for all of her grandchildren and I thought what a sweet thing to do and how fun to have a Valentine's tea party. That just is so much fun and this would be the perfect cake for a tea party in February. And it's from A Table Full of Love by Sky McAlpine, which I also told you about in my last video. But I was really excited that um, this recipe, which is rhubarb and almond cake in here, this has been um, put on the Waterstones blog. So you can all access it. So I'll link to the Waterstones page that has the recipe as a lovely kind of sneak peek of Skye's cookbook. And I thought I'd make it this afternoon and maybe inspire you to give it a go as well. So I'm gonna finish my cup of tea a minute and then I'm going to go down and bake a cake. <laughs>
So here we are with our February tea table laid, which wow. I think does look rather special. It does, it? and this cape looks amazing. It does, it's an enormous cape. We're going to have to definitely share this around. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks amazing too. My eyes are going, getting bigger looking at it. Well, would you be mother and oh, cut I, it? I will, and I'll I will. pour us some tea. Uh, you're always so much better at cutting the cakes than I am. I'm not really, but it just, <laughs> it's, it's just, thank you, yeah. It's just sort of like, I sort of do it confidently, whether it's good or not. That's the key. It is. <laughs> well, mm. I would say, yeah. for anyone who's going to try making this cake, oh, thank you, Yeah. Um, that do be careful because it cooks for so long I did put some foil on top, but it still got quite brown. Now, icing sugar is always great for <laughs> covering up <laughs> any of that. But I think... It's, it's fine, honey. It's not No, I know. It's, no, yeah. it's, it still is very good. But I, yeah. I would just say to you to definitely put some foil on top. Yeah. Um, Maybe too. When you see it starting I to get I think often because we have a fan oven, it's even hotter than um, when yes. it goes longer. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I think I might cook it at a lower temperature even than her fan but it looks amazing setting. inside and you want it to be cooked don't you that's the thing yes so oh boy is that mine it is indeed. oh thank you no, and i think this is your tea lovely and whenever i seem to pour a cup of tea people ask what type of tea do you have and it's always the same rather boring answer which is we have Yorkshire tea with milk oh, how appropriate <laughs> yes <is that? laughs> um gosh this does look good doesn't it look wonderful and you've done whipped cream and some really oh yes I, yeah thank you for reminding me so just for a little extra decadence mm -hmm. some whipped cream and also just some rhubarb um <coughs> Little which out. we can have with our cake and another tip i would say as well mm. is i think next time i would just stir in most of the rhubarb with the batter rather than kind of pressing it all into the cake at uh, the end yes like I just leave when i do the dorset apple cake which yes. is kind of similar i just yes. mix it all in yeah it's exactly quicker. Um, but those are just my sort of little tips <laughs> for what I do next time. Yeah, but, but it looks nice fabulous. Know. I love how there is pink rhubarb going through mm. the cake. It just looks wonderful. I must Wait say, try it. this is splendid. This looks so pretty. This is very Valentine's, it is. isn't it? And this is actually her china, isn't it? Is, it is, yes. And the teapot. She, yes, yes. yes. Um, yeah. Sky McAlpine has this gorgeous mm. ceramics range. Mm. And this we got last year as well as this. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Is it good? Ooh, oh, yeah. I can't wait to try it. I love it. Mm. I love the taste. Mm. Wow. Mmm. Mm. Really moist. And gluten free really as well, moist. surely. Yes, as long as mm. you use gluten free baking powder, yeah. then, then the cake would be gluten free. Wonderful. Um, which is good because we do have some gluten free friends, friends who yeah. come and visit sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to know gluten free recipes. It is. Oh, mm. it's so good though. Mm. Mm. Well done, you. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Sky. Yes. Mm. Mm. It's a lovely cookbook, too. Mm -hmm. So gorgeous. But like I said, I'll link to the recipe which is on the Waterstones blog. Mm, that's handy, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Everybody so, can make it. So good. Mm. And um, what are you planning to read this February? I've been chatting about some of my reading so far this month. Well, that's interesting because when we went to that lovely bookshop <laughs> in Haworth, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I realised that I needed to have a good think through and have a look and see where we had gaps in our collections and where I wanted to maybe do an upgrade because maybe we had something without a dust wrapper and it would be nice to look for that. Yes. So I've been having really a good look through our shelves, but I've also, for fun, been looking through this book called, by, um, called Pat Albeck, Queen of the Tea Towel. You know how oh, yes. tea towels? And yes. It's got an introdu um, introduction by her son Matthew Rise, and of course she's actually um, 
she must be the mother-in-law of Emma Bridgewater, right? So, oh, oh, yes, because yes, right. Matthew Rice is, is yes, the husband of yes. Emma Bridgewater. Um, but I love her tea towels and mm. I love her design. So that's what I've been looking at oh. at night and really enjoying. And also I've decided I'm going to have a reread of Elizabeth Jenkins. Oh, yes. Oh. So, um... Harriet, Harriet is the Persephone one, isn't it? Is, it? it yes. is, And then Tortoise and the Hare. Yeah. And then A View from Devonshire Hill. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought those would be really fun. And we've also got her biography of Jane Austen, mm -hmm. I found. So I, I thought yeah, that would be, that be really reading. interesting to have a look at those. I admire yeah. her writing so much. Yes, yeah, she's, she's done really writer. different books, yes. you know. Yeah. Um, We're going to finish off our mm. cake now I think <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> and yes I highly recommend giving it a go it's really very it's very really tasty. special amazing it really is. Yeah. and rhubarb I mean what could be nicer than February and rhubarb no exactly Cheers. yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, so it's the next day and I just wanted to pop on and finish off this vlog but also update you on my reading because I did finish Miss Bunkle Married yesterday evening. I so enjoyed it, I mean as you can tell I just raced through this book but it was really fun returning to it, I hadn't remembered that much from when I originally read it and it was just such a fun light read, I mean if you're in the mood for something just very charming, very light, entertaining then I so recommend giving the Miss Bunkle books by D.E. Stevenson a go. The first one, as I've already said, is Miss Bunkle's book, and this is the second one, Miss Bunkle Married. You don't have to have read the first to still really enjoy this one, but it makes sense to start at the beginning of the series if you haven't read any of them. And I really, really enjoyed returning to this one myself. I liked it just as much as Miss Bunkle's book actually, I think it's a really strong sequel and I love the opening bit especially because it's all about Miss Bunkle who is now married but I won't do any spoilers to tell you who she's married to in case you haven't read the first book. Um, so she's not Miss anymore but she's searching for a new house for herself and her husband and I love the descriptions of when she finds the perfect house that needs a lot of restoration only she really has the imagination to see what it could look like and there are some lovely descriptions about her transforming this house into a really beautiful place and I love little housekeeping details like that and descriptions of houses and she also transforms the garden so I loved that bit at the beginning all about the house and the garden and moving somewhere new and how that can be um, a way of sort of discovering a new part of yourself as well um, Barbara Bunkle really grows in this book she sort of expands as a character and part of that is because she travels to a new place, she makes new friends and that is shown as being really important in enlarging your own personality a little bit though she does still stay very true to herself of course um, but yeah this was just such a pleasant lovely read and then I did also start Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan, which I'm really enjoying already. I mean, it's something completely different. I don't normally read fantasy. It's just generally not a genre I enjoy that much, but I'm really enjoying this one. I'm very, very intrigued by it. I love all of the um, mythology that's talked about in this book and all of these different worlds and realms that are being created. I mean I'm only just in the first few pages but it's really um, action-packed already. <laughs> it's quite a page turner so I'm enjoying this a lot and I think it's just going to be another easy read but definitely very entertaining and it's a romance I think as well there's going to definitely be some element of romance to this story too so all of these that I've read lately have actually been great sort of 
Valentine'sy reads, all very sort of light and easy to read and entertaining with an element of romance in all of them and that's just what I've been in the mood for actually so I'm very happy with my recent reads so yes I, I recommend all of them so far. So yes, I still have to, um, I'm still reading the Catherine Mansfield short stories and biography and I'm going to keep going with this over the weekend as well. So those are my reading plans for the next few days. Oh, and also I always forget to tell you what I'm listening to because I always have an audiobook on the go all the time too and I always forget to talk about it. So right now I'm listening to The Parasites by Daphne du Maurier, which is one I haven't read for a long time. So I'm keen to be returning to it. I always enjoy Daphne du Maurier. And my favourite one actually to read kind of this time of year is Frenchman's Creek. That's a really good Valentine's inspired read. Um, if you're looking for something like that, I would really recommend that one by her. But I myself am enjoying Returning to the Parasites right now because it's been ages since I read that book. So I'm listening to that. I just finished listening to Rumpel and the Penge Bungalow Murders by John Mortimer. And before that, I listened to Poison in the Pen by Patricia Wentworth, A Miss Silver Mystery. So I do always have an audiobook on the go as well, but I often just forget to tell you about that. But yes, and then I also wanted to show you these cards which just arrived in the post. They came too late to show you in my little Valentine gift edit in my last video. But I thought I'd tell you about them because they're really more spring than sort of Valentine's anyway, these cards. And I was so pleased to order them. I think I discovered Susie Hamilton about two years ago and I talked about her on my Instagram and I know some of you discovered her then through that, but I wanted to share her again because I know quite a few of her, uh, quite a few of you might not know her cards and her artwork, which I think are really lovely. So I ordered this set of cards for spring, which I think is so pretty. I love the mix of birds and florals. They're just lovely. I think they're all blank inside, these cards too, which I like. And then I also ordered this floral set as well, which I think is really pretty. I'm so thrilled with these. I love her flowers in jugs and mugs and things like that. I think they're so pretty. That one makes me very excited for spring. And yes, I think she's just a really lovely artist. She's based in Somerset near Bath, I think. So I really recommend having a look at her website for pretty cards. She also does prints of her paintings as well and just has really nice things. But you know how much I love stationery, so I'm always looking out for nice cards and I thought I'd show you those as well. But anyway, I hope you've been having a wonderful week and you that you have a lovely weekend ahead. I'll see you again on Sunday. Thank you so much for watching this video. Extra big thanks to those of you who pressed the super thanks button on my last video. I always so appreciate your support. It's really amazing, but I really appreciate everyone who watches my videos, who gives them a thumbs up, who puts a comment on you're all very much appreciated and I'm looking forward to seeing you again on Sunday goodbye